Okay, this next section is called coded data. Now this is because you're given the information um, in some kind of code, it's not given to you straight. The reason for doing this is to um, test that you actually know what you're doing and you're understanding mean and standard deviation and everything. It comes up as a, a an exam question quite a lot because it tests that you can actually do what what's required rather than just plug things into the calculator. So we have the information given to us about x but it's got some sort of variation on x. So for example they might tell you instead of the sum of x they'll tell you the sum of x minus 50. Now if we think about what this means if we imagine x as being these red dots here on our number line they're all of our original values of x but instead of telling us about those, they're going to tell us about the x minus 50s. So all of those pieces of data have been shifted down by 50. So the mean of x is going to be 50 more than the mean of x minus 50. So we can calculate the, the mean of the from the information they give us, but then we know the mean of our original data would actually be 50 further up the scale and we'd have to adjust it to compensate for that. Now if we think about the standard deviation, the spread of the data hasn't actually changed, it's just moved down the scale. So the standard deviation of x will be the same as the standard deviation of x minus 50. So continuing on with that example, we do need a bit more information. So we're told the sum of x minus 50 is 705, the sum of x minus 50 squared, instead of telling us about x squared, is 28,250 and the number of items that we have is 25. So we want to find x bar and sigma, the mean and the standard deviation of x. So first of all we find the mean of x minus 50. So we do our 705 divided by 25 pieces of data. Now x bar will be 50 more than that because all of our pieces of data have been shifted down by 50. So there's our mean of x. The standard deviation of x minus 50 will give us the standard deviation of x because the, the spread hasn't changed, just every single piece of data has been moved down by 50. So using our standard deviation formula, we just put in the sum of the x minus 50 squareds minus the x minus 50 mean squared and square root it like this. So we get our final standard deviation. We don't need to make an adjustment like that because, as I said before, it's just shifted down. It hasn't changed how spread out the data is. Okay, and this example puts it into context. So we've got 20 runners who ran a race and they had their time recorded, and that's um, X. We have the total um, of being 1,080 minutes, and the sum of the X squared is 60,124. However, later on it was discovered that the official clock didn't actually start until one minute into the race. So all of those race times were short by a minute. So we want to calculate the true mean and standard deviation for the race times of those runners. So what we've actually been told about is x minus 1. Because they've had their race recorded as one minute too short. It should have started a minute sooner. So those numbers above aren't really the sum of x, they're the sum of x minus 1 and the sum of x minus 1 squared. So we rewrite that. So from there we can work out the mean of x minus 1 and then that gives us x bar, the mean of x, as being 55 because it's got to be 1 more than what was originally recorded. And we can work out the standard deviation Just remember that the, the mean that you're subtracting in that formula that I've circled in red here is the mean of the data before the adjustment, so the x minus 1 mean, not the 55, which is the, the true mean of x bar. And we'll finish with a little maths pun.